Church located on the corner of 12th and Roll Island Avenue, Northeast Washington, D.C., where our pastor is Bishop Calvin L. Matthews. You all are welcome to the Isle of Patmos Baptist Church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, we come before you, Lord, to thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for your word that you had inspired men to write for us. Lord God, we pray that your spirit will come and minister to us as we read your word, as we hear your word, as we just go through your word, that your spirit will, will, will teach us what we should know about your word, that we are keeping in our hearts and sin not against you, Lord, but to go out and share your word with others that they may call on you to be saved. Lord God, we ask you this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Welcome. Welcome. Today, the Lord God allows to be in the book of Joshua, chapter 11 and 12. Pray that we get through chapter 11 and 12 for the book of Joshua. I have the NIV version of, of the Bible before me, known as the New International Version of the Bible. And remember, we, have, we just finished uh, Joshua chapter 10. And remember, the campaign to catch a Canaan took, took place in three stages. First, the Israelites cut the land in half from east to west, cantering the strategic towns of Jericho and Ai. That's found in chapter 6 and 8. And second, the Israelites defeated an alliance of Amorites kings in the south and took their cities. It's found in chapter 9 and 10. Now, this is the last stage of the capture. The Israelites had captured the northern kingdom, the northern parts, the northern parts of the country by defeating an alliance of pagan tribes under the leadership of the king of Hazor. Okay, now, just to bring you up to date, okay, now let's um, start with verse 1. Joshua chapter 11, verse 1. Talking about the northern kings being defeated. Let's listen to what the Lord inspired men to write for us. Verse 1 reads, When Jabin, when Jabin heard of King Hazor, when Jabin, king of Hazor, heard of this, he sent word to Jabal, king of Madon, to the kings of Shemron and Akshaph, and to the northern kings who were in the mountains in the in the Abbot south of Kenilworth and in the western foothills of the Nephah Nor Nephah Dor on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and west, to the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, and Jebusites in the hill country, and to the Hevites below Hermon, in the region of Mizpah. They all, they, they came, they came out with all their troops and a large number of horses and chariots and a huge army as numerous as the sand on the seashore. All these kings joined forces and made camp together at the waters of Miron to fight against Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid of them, because by this time tomorrow, I will hand all of them slain over to Israel. You are to hamstring their horses and burn their chariots. So Joshua and the whole army came against them suddenly at the waters of Miron and attacked them. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Israel. They defeated them and pursued them all the way to greater Sidon and Misavoth, Maine, and to the valley of Mizpah on the east until no survivors were left. 
Joshua did to them as the Lord had directed. He hamstringed their horses and burned their chariots. At this time, Joshua turned back and captured Hazel and put his king to the sword. Hazel, Hazel had been the head of all these kingdoms. Everyone in it, they put to the sword. They told her they destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed. And he burned Hazor itself. Man, let me pause right there. Let me pause. As we read. A northern king, a, a northern coalition was formed by, by Hazor, a city of more of, of, of some 40,000 people. The, you, the United Army was huge. Yes, that United Army was huge. They had war church which were like tanks in this time. Yes. The northern king uh, um the northern kings united to resist the Israelites. They they were led by Jabin, the king of Hazor. He massed he massed a considerable force at the waters of uh, uh, Miron. God told Joshua not to not to fear the enemy's superior equipment. The horses will become hamstring disabled or disabled, and the chariots will be burned. The Israelites will not need to savage to savage them because the only resources they needed was the presence of the mighty God Himself. Amen. And again, it was Joshua, directed by God, that launched a sudden attack. The enemy army was destroyed and these cities were taken. As in this as as in the southern campaign, Joshua used speed and used speed of approach and surprise attack. He did the same with this campaign. Every soldier was killed and the chariots and horses were destroyed. Only the city of Hazor was burned. Amen. Now, let's move on to verse 12. Verse 12. Joshua took all the royal cities and their kings and put them to the sword. He totally destroyed them as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded. Yet Israel did not burn any of the cities built on the mountains except Hazor, which Joshua burned. The Israelites carry off for themselves all the plunder and livestock of these cities, but all the people they put to the sword until they, uh, until they completely destroyed them, not sparing anyone that breathed. Amen. Verse 15, As the Lord commanded his servant Moses, so Moses commanded Joshua, and Joshua did it. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took the entire land, the hill country, all the navy, the whole region of Goshen, the western foothills, the Arabah up, and the mountains of Israel with their foothills. From Mount, from Mount Halak, which rises towards Sir, to Belagad in the valley of Lebanon below Mount Hermon. He captured all their kings and put them to death. Joshua waged war against all the kings for a long time, except for the Hevites living in Gibeon, living in Gibeon, one of the cities, not, not one of the cities made a treaty a peace with the Israelites who took them all in battle. Amen. For it was for it was the Lord Himself who hardened the hearts to wage war against Israel, so that he might destroy them totally and ex exterminating them without mercy, as the Lord has commanded Moses. At that time, Joshua went and destroyed the Amalekites from the foothill, from the from the hill country, 
from Hebron, Debra, and Anath, from the hill, from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Israel. Joshua, Joshua totally destroyed them by their towns. No Amalekites were left in the Israelites' territory. Only in Gazar, Gath, and Asher did any survive. So Joshua took the entire land as just as the Lord had directed Moses and he gave it as an inheritance to Israel according to their tribal division. Then the land had rest from war. Amen. Amen. Let me pause again. Pause again. The power, the power of the north was broken and the land was at Israel's mercy. Amen. Joshua destroyed Hazar and overran the other cities. The destruction was complete and Joshua carried out the commands that God has given, that God had given to Moses. The Canaanites were being destroyed because of their paganism. Amen. The whole land was, was being purged of fertility, courts, and magic. It was to become God's land and the home of his people. Yes, the home of God's people. Last of all, the Amalekites, last of all, the Amalekites were destroyed. They were the race of, remember, they was the race of giants which had frightened the Israelites and weakened their morale just 40 years earlier. Remember when Moses sent the 12 men to spy out the land and 10 came back with a bad report? And Joshua and Caleb came back with a good report. And, and that's in Numbers 13 and 14. Look it up. The Israelites populated the other towns. The war of ex extermination was conducted as God commanded. Unlike their predecessors, this generation of Israelites followed the Lord's direction. Yes, unlike their predecessors, this generation of the Israelites followed the Lord's direction. They were, for, they were faithful to God and received the promise rest. Amen. Amen. Now, let's move on to chapter 12. Joshua chapter 12, a list of, of the defeated kings. These are the kings of the lands whom the Israelites had defeated, whose territory they took over east of the Jordan from the Ammon, from Ammon George to Mount Hermon, including all the eastern side of the Abba. Sidon king of the Israelites who reigned in Hezbollah, he ruled from Aram, on the rim of the of the Amron George. From the middle of the George to the Jabob River, which is the border of the Amorites, this included half of Gilead. He also ruled over eastern Arabah from the Sea of Galilee to the Sea of the Arabah. That that is the Dead Sea. To Beth Jeshemoth and then southward below the slopes of Pisbah, in the territory of Or, king of Basham, one of the last of the Reponites who reigned in Ashtaroth and Ejeroth. He ruled over Mount Hermon, Sele, Selica, all of Basham to the border of the people of Geisha and Mecca and half of Gilead to the border of Siron, king of Hashem. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the Israelites conquered them. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave their land to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manassas to be their possession. Here, is a list of the kings of the land that Joshua and the Israelites conquered on the west side of Jordan. From Baal Gav in the valley of Lebanon 
to Mount Hale, which rises towards Sir. Joshua gave these lands as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel according to their tribal divisions. Verse 8, the lands included the hill country, the western foothills, the Alba, the mountain slopes, the, the wilderness of the navy, which these lands, these, these were the lands of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hevites, and the Jebusites. These were the kings. Yes, these were the kings. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai, near Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Jermoth, one. The king of Lachish, one. The king of Eglon, one. The king of Geshur, one. The king of Deber, one. The king of Jeber, one. The king of Homer, one. The king of Armad, one. The king of Libna, one. The king of Adullam, one. The king of Makeda, one. The king of Bethel, one. The king of Tapula, one. The king of Hebra, he, Hephrath, one. The king of Aphat, one. The king of Lekshurn, one. The king of Madon, one. The king of Hazor, one. The king of Sharon, Miron, one. The king of Akshaf, one. The king of Tenat, one. The king of Jonica, one. And Camel, um, the king of Jonica, and Camel, one. The king of Dor, and Naphod Dor, one. The king of Jogorim, and Gilgal, one. The king of Tejah, Tejah, one. Thirty-one kings in all. Amen. Amen. Help me, Lord. Then chapter 12, chapter 12 lists the kings and the people that the Israelites had conquered west of the Jordan River. With all possibilities, with all, all the possibility of effect, of effective opposition removed. Yes. Chapter 12 lists the kings and the people of Israel, of the Israelites, had conquered west of the Jordan River with all possi possible possibility of effective opposition removed. Yes, everything removed. The people now, the people can now distribute the land. Amen. They have rest and the Israelites can distribute the lands among the tribal divisions, among their tribal divisions. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Father God, in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, we come again, Lord, to thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your scriptures that will help us to let us know where we came from, to let us know where we are going. Lord God, pray that your spirit will help me as I go forward. Lord God, we know some of the words in your scriptures were not pronounced as some were pronounced them. But Lord God, help all that hear to understand what you are saying in your word, that they may keep it in their hearts and sin not against you, but to share your word with others, Lord God that others may call on you to be saved, that others may call on you knowing that they had the victory, that they put you first. So God, let us continue to look towards you, to have you as our leader, to, to worship you, because it is you that made us, and now we ourselves, we are your people, Lord God. It's you that give us everything that we have. 
So, Lord God, I pray that you continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us in the way that we should go, that we will not hurt anyone, but to love everybody as your love is in us. So, Lord God, we ask you this prayer in the name of Jesus. My soul says, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Make it all right, Lord. You know you will. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 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 